Alright, so right now you're on video um, 5, you're working on your shadows, and as you can see you've probably had everything here already checked off. If you haven't, um, and you just skipped to go to video 5, make sure that you get number step number 6 completed. Step number 6 is you complete the plan sheet on page 6, and I want you to sketch two different ideas for your final project. If you need to um, see some ideas again, you can go back into the previous video um, that I had, um, I believe it's video two, where you can watch um, what your project or um, so forth. And also just type in um, perspective, shadows, drawings, and you'll be able to find some ideas on there as well. Again, it's your free choice on what you would like to do with the um, background that you created. So if after you've done um, page six your two different ideas the next step is is to begin your final drawing and I ask that you draw light until you get it right. So the first thing that you're going to do is using a pencil you'll choose your favorite sketch that you did on page six in your plan sheet and I know it's very difficult to see on here um, but I have, as I zoom this in a little bit closer and get some reflection, you can see that there is a shark that I did, a large shark, so it looks like it's really close to me on this page, as well as some coral. So I drew my coral, there, that's a little bit better of a picture. Then you can see just lots of lines and making lots of Ys. Then I have here a stingray, that's a little bit smaller. I have a large turtle uh, to kind of get some idea of the size there. So it looks like the turtle is more in front um, in that foreground part versus the um, stingray. I also don't want the stingray um, to be bigger than the shark unless it's really in the front and the shark is really in the back. You can also see my fish. Um, are Some are a little bit larger, some are smaller because they're a little bit further into that distance. So as you are doing your sketches, I will check and review them, but remember, when you're doing your drawing on here, make it truly proportionate. So you want to have uh, that nice proportionate size, okay? And the next step, what you'll do is you'll get one of the tiny brushes, um, which you'll see here. You'll get some black paint, and then you're gonna get a very tiny brush um, to be able to help you with what you need to do. So in the end, you are looking for a finished product that looks like this, where you have your nice shadows um, that fits your um, painting and the design that you originally did, and making sure that you have your perspective and proportion in um, the correct way. Okay, so on here you can see um, I've already started painting some of my pencil lines that I had done and I'll zoom in. Um, I've got my important parts that we talked about in our planning page that you want to have things that are in that foreground, things that are in the middle ground, things that are in the background. Um, so you've got a little bit of this all set up on here and you also want to keep things proportionate. So proportionate meaning you can see that this tree here is in the foreground. It's really close to you. You've got the details of the um, grass showing and then we've got the proportionate elephants that are um, you know where they are placed on the page. So you can see which ones are a little further going into the background that are also the tinier ones, what are the babies, what's the big one that's a little bit closer um, in that middle ground area, and that's what I'm going to be finishing painting on here just to show you. So this last one here, just as a quick little trick or reminder, as you can see, I know it's very difficult, um, the pencil line is nice and thin. Um, I didn't push too dark or whatnot. What I would like to do is using my paintbrush, you are going to be using a small, thin, tiny paintbrush. Um, it's very, very tiny. And you can already see that this blob of paint here, and I'll zoom out so you can see, does not look that big um, on here. You know, I know it comes out rather quickly, but this is too much to just do this entire thing. 
Um, so this is some lady had left. Um, they had poured some black and didn't need it, so I'm using that up. Um, I might have some cups that I might put some black paint in that you can use at your table and just share with others and put the lid on so that way it's just easier to not waste as much paint. But the trick is, is you want to outline your shape first and then fill in, just as we always have done. So you can see how I do that on here, and I will make sure I fast forward it. And there, when you're done, just make sure as it dries, if there's any areas that you need to touch up, you can touch up and then you can move on to the next video. When it's time to paint, make sure that you have a very small amount of black paint, whether you're using somebody's extras black. I have some extra black that somebody did not use from the previous class or finish using. Um, that way we're not wasting paint. So we're using our paint and then um, I might also have some cups that you could just take the cup to your table and put the lid back on when you're done so that way the paint stays nice and moist. And you're really just using small, small amounts. So I recommend however you want to start, if you're starting with something in the center because that's what's exciting to you at the time, what you need to do then is, so you don't get your hands smeared in anything, you rotate your paper. So don't feel free to rotate your paper however you want. Also consider where you lay things out if, you know, I have it shiny a little bit here uh, for my coral, which I can see that you have a hard time seeing in this light, um, that when I put my black on it, it should stand out because I have my blues here. But some spots of my shark, because it's pure black here, I might not see that design or detail as well as I would like. So I will show you the first step to do is to outline your shape and then fill in. And that way you get a nice crisp clean line. And I will begin that um, and come back and show you the finished product. Okay, so here you can see that I painted the top part and how bold and everything that that stands out now. Like the shadows as if you're underneath and you're looking up. And now I'm going to be working on the coral and then adding to my shark so you can see some of those details. I've had a few people ask me how I do the coral and the trick is is you want to have not too much paint on your brush but just enough so that way when it comes on here it doesn't get it fuzzy feeling. And there, so when you're done, you've got your turtle, the fish, the stingray, the coral, and the shark. So what's neat is I want the shark to look like he was looming and coming out of the dark depth there. And that's how it ends.